Hi, I'm Chris Walker, an environment educator here at Green Acres. When observing wildlife in the natural world, birds are some of the easiest and most beautiful types to watch. You can find birds in every habitat all over the earth. So let's take a closer look into the world of birds. What makes birds different and unique? Birds have special adaptations or changes to help them meet their basic needs. When you think of a bird's special adaptations, what do you think of? Let's discuss a few. I have my friend here, the great horned owl, and he's gonna help us learn about some of the bird's special adaptations. Now, when you were thinking what made birds special, did you think wings? A lot of people do, but bats and insects also have wings. But if you were thinking feathers, now you're on to a bird's special adaptation. Birds like this great horned owl have feathers to help them fly and keep them warm. These longer flight feathers are found on their wings and their tail and what's helped them as they're soaring and flapping their wings to maintain flight. They're also very light and that's an important thing for birds is to stay light. Some of the other feathers they have though are like these contour feathers. These contour feathers, which are all fluffy, are on the, bo the body of the bird to help keep it warm. You also will notice that birds have many different patterns. Some feathers might have spots on them, or the great horned owl, you see stripes everywhere and splotches. Also, many birds come with lots of colors. This is a blue jay feather, and you have cardinals, and. Basically, any color of the rainbow can be found on a bird's feather. Another special adaptation about them that's connected to their flight is their hollow bones. Yes, birds have hollow bones. They've evolved air sacs in their bones to reduce the weight so they can maintain flying. Another adaptation are their beaks. If you see the beak up here of this great horned owl, it kind of looks like this. And this beak is made for tearing at flesh when it catches its prey. Kind of a gruesome beak here, where some beaks are a little more softer and subtle. And this is like a duck's beak, as it's feeding on the little algae and plants and bugs that live in the water. Some beaks, like my friend here, the hummingbird, are so tiny. This is its entire skull and beak. And these birds mainly just drink nectar out of flowers, so they don't need a strong beak. Whereas a cardinal has a very big triangular beak to help crack open seeds. Another adaptation of birds, the last one I'm gonna talk about today, are these right here, eggs. Hear that? These are hard-shelled eggs. Other animals do lay eggs, but they're soft-shelled. Birds' eggs have to be hard-shelled because mom and dad have to sit on them to incubate them as the baby chicks develop. And if these were soft-shelled eggs, the parents might crush their babies and they never hatch. So hard-shelled eggs, another great adaptation for birds. So now that we've learned some about birds, let's go out and observe some on our own. People enjoy bird watching for many reasons. Some for their beauty, whether it's their song or their beautiful look. Some are looking for birds to find that new bird they've never seen before. While others simply just like to be out in nature enjoying themselves. But for those who do want to do some bird watching, some tools to help is one, a pair of binoculars and a field guide. These two will help you get a close-up look at birds, and help learn a bit more about them. Now, even though birds are everywhere, attracting them to a specific location, like these bird feeders here, make it a great way to see birds. Birds are everywhere, and you can find them all times of the day. But there are two times when it's easier to spot birds, and that's at sunrise and sunset. At these times, the birds are either A, just getting up from a long night of slumber, and they're hungry, ready to eat, 
or they're just grabbing a few snacks before they head off to bed. These are two awesome times to catch birds. Now, when you're looking to observe birds, you gotta locate them first. And the two best ways to do that are with movement and with sound. Let's start with movement. Birds are always moving around. So watch what they do. When you see a bird moving, follow it with your eyes. Is it hopping from branch to branch? Or is it crawling up and down the side of the trunk of a tree? When it's flying, are its wings making a little pattern? Or are they just gliding through the air? Learning how birds move not only tells you a bit more about them, it's easier to find them. Also, their calls are a great way to tell where they're at. You might not see them, but you'll hear them up in the trees. And so, listen for those calls. They might be the melodious call of a bird trying to attract a mate, or it might just be some of its calls to just pass along information to other birds, such as, hey, there's a predator down there, or I'm over here, or this is my area. Birds are always communicating to each other, and so even though we might not understand the language, they help us locate them. Now, identifying birds isn't necessary. You could simply enjoy watching our feathered friends flutter back and forth doing their daily business. But after a while, maybe you wanna know what that one bird is that keeps coming back to your feeders, or how do you tell these two brownish birds apart? That's where identification comes in. There are many field guides to help identify birds. One, like the eastern region of the United States, has lots of birds to see, but it can be a little overwhelming for a beginner. So I suggest start off with these little smaller guides, these are pamphlets. You know, Ohio birds or backyard birds. Here, you can still see a lot of the birds, but just a lesser amount, not as overwhelming for a beginner. So now it's your turn to go out and enjoy the birds. Maybe start in your backyard and see how that goes. If you enjoy that, go to a park, hike through the woods, visit a pond. The birds in those locations, were they always the same or were they different? Discover for yourself. Well, I hope you've enjoyed bird watching with me. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time here at Green Acres.